Welcome to Cardboard Box Games, I'm Adam. And I'm Adam. Today we're going to be talking about mulliganing and new cards. New cards, yep. And then uh, our next week of tournaments. Our next week, which we have a tournament. Let's get started. Alright Adam, so I've been thinking a lot about mulliganing. And I want to just back up a little bit and say like in Magic, Magic the Gathering... Uh, how often do you mulligan? How often do you feel good about mulliganing? In Magic the Gathering? Yeah. Um, I feel pretty good in Magic the Gathering for mulligan. Um, I like how you can keep mulliganing with, uh, Magic the Gathering if you mulligan and your hands are still bad. Uh, but with Keyforge, when you mulligan, you only can do it once, so that's why... What about the about issue, it. or maybe not issue, what about how you lose a card every time you mulligan in Magic? I really like that, because then you can also scry and see the future cards. The scry rule makes it good. Yeah, yeah. you're right. So, um, in my opinion, this is me, if somebody that's played a lot of Magic, and I've played, tried to be pretty competitive in it. Mulliganing in Magic Gathering is a while I think the rule is okay, I think the rule and the scrying thing is okay, what I don't like is that it's very hard to come back from card advantage. In Magic, if you have seven cards and I have five, mm -hmm. the odds of me winning are really low because I'm down two cards now. And every card in Magic is super valuable because it's hard to get another card. That makes sense? I see, yeah. So in Keyforge, the mechanic is a bit different because you always draw back up at the end of your turn. You do, yeah. So my next question that I had is like, how often do you find yourself mulliganing right now? Uh, I barely ever mulligan. Uh, the only time I actually ever mulliganed was uh, when my whole entire hand was all action cards. Um, that's really the only time I mulliganed. And honestly, I want to say, like, the very first bit of time that I played Keyforge, I've been the same way, like, barely mulliganing, because I always feel like there's something I could do. But I've actually been thinking a lot about, I think we should all be mulliganing a lot more. Almost to the point where I bet you it's 50% of the time we should be mulliganing. So I think, and especially, let's talk about a scenario first before, and I'll dig into why I think it, think it this to be true. Mm-hmm. The first turn, you have seven cards. What do you look for in your first turn hand? I look for, a, like, an artifact to play, or, like, a card that gives me amber right away, so the opponent can't use, like, terror to gain two right away. Uh, Especially if they have this, yeah. 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 Which I've had that happen to me, by the way. It's That's mostly what I use. Artifact is a great example because it's something that never feels good to play mm -hmm. because it comes into play tapped and you're going to have to wait. Artifacts like have this feeling where it's like they don't change the game, the board, right away. There are some that do. So the ones that you have to tap to do an action on is what I'm, I guess I'm talking about. Like, yeah. um, so typically you're going to be waiting on average of two, two additional turns before you can actually use your artifact, maybe three. Uh, so turn one is a good time to dump that. I, I agree with you. What else are you looking for? Because on turn one, you can only play one card. So that means you draw no extra cards. Are you also thinking about your turn two? I am, because a couple times uh, I had Hunting Witch, and I played that card first. And usually the opponent couldn't stop it. So then next turn I could get put a bunch of card creatures on a game, a bunch of Amber. That's actually pretty cool, yeah, because if you play, it's hard a lot of times for an opponent to take care of a creature on the, their first turn. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for me, the, that same scenario, what am I looking for when I'm turn one? I'm looking at it more in numbers. So the perfect hand for me, honestly, mm -hmm. the perfect hand, this, this rarely ever happens, it never happens, is six cards of one house, one card of another house. <laughs> And I, my goal would be I would play that one card of that one house. In my yeah. second turn, I'd dump all six cards. I look at it in terms of numbers now. And I've actually been getting to the point where I mulligan even more. Now, those numbers, that what's in that, that house is also important. And I prefer creatures. 
So let's talk about a more realistic hand. A more realistic hand for me would be four cards of a house with three of those being a creature, one of those being an action, and then uh, potentially two cards and one card. So two cards of a house, one card of a house. Or what I really, really dislike is three cards of a house, two cards of a house, and two cards of a house for my first hand. Because... Playing first, playing first means that you really need to be thinking about your second turn. So a lot of times, I will mulligan if my card, my hand is just mixed. If I'm getting a completely evenly spread house distribution with creatures, with only like one or two creatures in the house, I will mulligan 100% of the time now. That's the way my mind is gone. Hmm. Because you lose nothing for mulligan. If your hand is average or below, I mulligan. You may get another average hand, but I actually have played a few games at work the last th couple times. I've mulliganed, and my hand was like, oh, I don't know if I should keep this. And I've been erring on the side of mulliganing more often, and I mulliganed, ended up with a much higher probability win, winning hand. Or maybe I shouldn't even say winning, probability winning, but much stronger turn two. Oh, okay. And then on turn two, if I'm going second, mm -hmm. I'm looking for a way to drop three creatures in play. So the worst scenario for me is getting an opening hand of two, two, two. Yeah. I will almost always mulligan that and go down to five. And the worst scenario um, there is going to be two, two, one, but you, have to, you kind of have to play with that. Mm -hmm. Ideally... You are putting a ton of pressure on the board. So, like, three creatures is, like, ideal, in my opinion. Minimum, I think, of two. You, you've got to get something on the board. Action items, action cards, artifacts as well also are great to get on turn two. But actions, I don't think, mean anything on turn two. It's kind of my, my take on it. Like, yeah, you're not going to bait and switch. You're not going to too much to protect. You're not going uh, to play, like, stun every creature of this house. You're not going to do Cleansing Wave. There's just so many things you're not going to want to do. Exactly. So you want creatures in your opening hand. So I guess with that said, um, as you go forward, like, are you going to start thinking about like how you mulligan a little bit differently? Or does that any of that even make sense to you? That did make sense to me. Um, now that I think about it, I think I might actually start mulligan more. Um, because usually I just feel like I could just dump everything out, you know, yep. right away, redraw cards, but I think you're right, like, action cards don't do anything good, you just need to get a good, uh, battlefield right away. Yeah, and that can be artifacts, that can be creatures, you need, you need board presence on yes. your second turn if you're going first, and on your first turn if you're going second. Yeah. Makes sense. Anyway, I've been testing this out at work when I have time to play with people over lunch. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it makes a huge impact. And I mean, I'm talking like, I've played against people who weren't doing that, that weren't, like that would be like, oh, my hand's so slow. And if I'm playing on the side of like, I'm looking for these type of things, I'll crush them because I changed, I gained so much momentum. But on the flip side, if I do the, my hand is so slow, and I keep something sketchy, I will get crushed. Yeah. I think the beginning of the game is more important than, I think the first turn, the second turn, and the third turn is so important to build that foundation, because otherwise you're playing catch up the entire time. So if you're player one, mm -hmm. you need to be pretending like they've already got three creatures on the board. And you're going to have to play one thing, and you need to have a hand that can respond to those three creatures. You will get lucky sometimes, and they don't. But there are other times they're going to dump a four, four creatures. And I actually had a guy do this to me at work. And it was just insane because it was like he ended up with like four or five cards of a house on a second turn. I kept a, ha a hand that was kind of like a 3-2-2 two, two hand. You know, and it wasn't, it wasn't super powerful in any way. I was behind for a long time. That is incredibly rare for that to happen. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, I think mulliganing 
I think the, my bottom, my suggestion is if your hand is average or below, you mulligan, which I believe should be happening 50% of the time. You should look at your hand, look at your house distribution, look at the cards in that house. Your, your ideal hand, like I said, for starting is honestly six cards in one house, one card of another house. You're going to play that card of that one house. Your next turn, you're going to dump it all. That is not going to happen in, in real life. Mm -hmm. But the closer you can get your hand to form to that, I think the better off you're going to be. And when we start talking about the third turn, it gets a little bit harder because now you've got the random draw mechanic in there. I see. So, um, I guess with mulliganing, the thing that I also like is you're always drawing back up to, to six. You do, yes. So, so it, there's like no reason not to do it. There's basically. no reason not to mulligan at the beginning yeah. of the game. And I think I still got this stigma in my mind where it's like in Magic the Gathering, you lose a resource when you do that. Mm -hmm. And while it's true, it's not really true because... You just redraw everything. Yeah. Like yeah. Because having one less card in your hand just means you're going to be drawing an extra card. So you really don't ever lose that card. It would be interesting if the, in the future when we mulligan the new rules would be like you gain a chain. That might be more interesting. It would be interesting if they find to, like beyond the first mulligan or something yeah. like that. Um, that is actually an interesting idea. It's like you can mulligan, you can mulligan an additional time but you gain a chain for it or something like that. Yeah. Huh. I don't think they'll ever do that but that is an interesting concept because but it would be cool if they had the option of a mulligan again. That would be pretty cool. Because I'm thinking about it, like how powerful mulliganing is right now. And I think how little people are actually using mulligan mm -hmm. uh, or mulliganing what I believe is correct. And again, this is, could be wrong and I could change. I'm not like a master at this in any way. Yeah. But I've just been doing a lot of thinking about mulliganing. And when I play with other people, I've actually been just very aggressively mulliganing my hand down. Because if it's not the, if it's not above average or a perfect hand, I'm gonna take another shot and I'm gonna try to get that better hand. Um, so yeah, I think that's all I got on mulliganing. How about you, you got anything else to follow up with? Are you gonna mulligan a lot more in the next tournament? Uh, I think I actually will, because I've been realizing every single time I duck with the can like you, so, for example, I basically were behind the whole game. So I think I actually will start mulligan -ing. And See going first is the most important. Going first? For mulliganing. Okay. I think actually going second, You, if you have a great second hand, you're going second. So which one do you prefer? Um, so oh, that's a whole other question. <laughs> I honestly prefer going second right now. Second? Because you, because what ends up happening is you can almost, you get, you get an advantage on drawing more cards before your opponent, mm -hmm. and you get an advantage on, if you have a good hand, dumping more board presence. So it's like, turn, two, turn one, you play an artifact. Okay. Or one creature. Turn two, I dump three creatures out, you're now behind. So your turn needs to be enough to come on top of what I've just done. So I'm a big fan of going second right now. Okay. I'm not saying that's better in any way. I think mulliganing is more powerful with your first hand. I think going first isn't significantly worse. I just really prefer going second and putting that pressure on my opponent to have to come back and get a, a, an advantage over top of me. And so what's gonna happen is I play three creatures. Let's say they played one the first turn. They need to now play, they need to either deal with my creatures or they need to play more creatures than me that are more powerful. And then I actually can build on top of that. So I'm constantly going to be like putting them in a position where they need to come back and they I need see. to catch up. And I, and I enjoy that. Now if you have a weak second, if you're going first or you're going second, you have a weak hand. Yeah, mulligan. it's or, mulligan for sure. Yeah. And if that hand ends up being not so good, 
Like, you can only play one creature and artifact. Yeah, that's going to be a rough. That, to me, is a rough start. I think. Um, and then that left the board in a state where now they can actually get a massive advantage on their next turn. Mm-hmm. But I definitely like creature-heavy decks. And I definitely like just putting the pressure out there. And actually, at work the other day, I had... I had a creature line that was 18 creatures long. 18? They had no wow. like board wipe, and it was just absolutely so much fun. I got through, I got literally had every creature in my deck on the board. <laughs> I got through my deck. I think he had killed like one creature. Yeah. And, and it was just like, everything did everything too. So it was like, this thing let me do this thing, and this thing let me do this thing. It's just so much fun. It was a ton wow. of fun. All right. Let's go, go jump over to some new Age of Ascension cards. We're not going to go through them all. But what we will do, you really want to talk about the Sanctum ones. Yeah. These were announced in a live stream yesterday, as far as I know. This is, it won't be yesterday when this video gets out. So these are like the most freshly uh, talked about cards. And I guess what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of like give our impressions on it. If we're excited about the card or not excited. And then we'll get through maybe five, six of them. And then we'll, we'll probably have to do more in the next video that we do. And Sound good? Yep. So the first one is a Sanctum creature. Sanctum. Four power, one armor. And I got to get better about watching the armor because I did forget that. <laughs> yeah. that one there. When you play this, you capture three amber. When you reap this creature, you discard one amber from him. His name is Albaid the Grim. Which he almost, is he a, he's a spirit knight. The image isn't loaded in high quality. but That's he, a new name, I think. He's spirit. a spirit and he's a knight, which is, he's a dual, he's a dual, like, um, category or whatever you want to call that, a creature type or whatever. So when you discard the amber go back to the opponent? I think it just goes back to the, the, the pile. Oh, just. I think it's actually removing the amber from, because discard means, like, put it back in the global supply. I see. So basically, he comes in and still captures three amber. Yeah, and every time you use him, you uh, it actually takes an amber off of him and throws it away. Um, That's pretty cool. I guess are you thumbs up, thumbs down on this guy? I'm thumbs up because like if you can like capture three amber from the opponent. That's pretty good, and then you can get rid of that amber too, so he can't get it back. And the, the creature is kind of hard to kill since it has one armor on it. I'm a thumbs up too. I love. Cards in houses that can slow the opponent down for four junkies. So that's the capture three right away. And you're yeah. right, it's a tough creature. But I really, really love the idea that I can take Amber off of this guy so mm-hmm. that when my opponent kills them, they don't get it all back. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, I'm. Whether this card is good or not, I think it is good, by the way. I think this card is incredibly good. Me too. And it's Knight, which usually synergizes with other things that think, or Sigma may have. But I love this mechanic of getting rid of Amber that you've captured. Exactly. It's like a delayed steal. I love it. Okay. Next one. Um, Abend, the armor smith, is a three-power, no-armor sanctum creature. Mm -hmm. He's a human. So other creatures get one armor. So that's just static. So everything gets one armor. Um, He doesn't, though, so he's still fairly easy to kill. Okay. Uh, Action for the remainder of the turn, other friendly creatures get plus one armor. So you can tap him to, like, soup up the armor on everyone for, for a turn. Okay. Are you thumbs up on that or thumbs down on that? Or so neutral? When you, so just him being in play, everyone gets one armor? Yep. And then if you Except tap for himself, him, yeah. Then everyone gets plus one more armor. Until the end of the turn, yeah. yeah. So it makes it for a cool combat turn. So I like him. I'm a thumbs up. Um... I feel like that's pretty cool. It's harder, for, and it's Sanctum, I believe. It is Sanctum, yeah. Sanctum, okay. So then most Sanctum creatures are um, super huge, so then you can do a bunch of damage without having your guys die. I feel like that's pretty awesome. This goes to that, that the concept that I have where I'm also, I'm like a hesitant thumbs up. Hesitant. But I am thumbs up. Um and the reason for it is I feel like this card is a you have to deal with it card mm-hmm. because I think armor is more powerful than what it what you think of when you first read that. Like I think especially if you have a creature board of like four or five, 
-hmm. Spreading out, giving every one of those creatures an armor, I think is more powerful than what it looks like at first glance. That's my feeling. But giving them a second armor to go in and be able to take out some of the big creatures of your opponent, them take limited damage and still survive through that is also pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. So I'm with you on that one, by the way. All right, next one. Another Sanctum creature. This is a common creature from what I can tell, and I don't think I was doing that in the other ones, but I think they're all common that I've talked about so far. Um, five power, one armor. It's a pretty good, like almost like a horseman yeah. rating. Human Knight, Barrister, Barrister Joya, mm-hmm. and it's simply enemy creatures cannot reap. That's pretty awesome. Do your thumbs up, I think. Yeah, thumbs up. Anything that to delay them with Amber, it's always pretty good. I that, think. So that may basically forces them that they to attack. attack or use an action. I actually really love this card, and I think I, I think it's going to be so much fun to play. Yeah. And I think it's going to be painful when this is played against you. Because I just imagine a taunt guy. With this put beside it, and it's like, oh, man, i got to get through that taunt. Or, you know, it's just going to be, or it's going to have extra armor on it. Exactly. And it's like, i got to use my entire turn to kill this taunt creature and try to get Barris the Joya out. Can't reap at all. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I just think this card is going to make your opponent play in ways that they probably don't want to play in. Yeah. So I actually really, really, really like this card. I'm super excited about this card. All right. Um, next one. This is a four power, two armor. Two armor. Sanctum creature, human knight. Um, and I'm trying to figure out how to pronounce this, but it's C H A L L E. So, Shawl, the safeguard is how I would pronounce that. Okay. Shawl with a C H has a deployability, so it can go anywhere on the battlefield. Love that. And it has taunt. And this creature's neighbors cannot be attacked unless they have taunt. So basically, it just allows you to throw a taunt in somewhere on the battlefield. I feel like that's pretty cool. Uh, like, if you have a creature you want to, like, protect, so you can just throw that guy in anywhere and protect anyone. It's pretty cool. Like the guy we just talked about. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think this card is also fantastic because you never get the creatures in the order that you want them. Mm-hmm. So there's times that you've got, like, creatures that are super vital that you keep in your opponent locked down. And this can just kind of swing in and help protect them beyond even more stuff. So yeah, all right, uh, we'll do we'll do this one here. This is a two power, no armor creature, the Gray Rider. Which, by the way, I love that name. It's also a human monk. Human monk. This has a deployability. That's so cool. put it anywhere on the battlefield. And when you play with this, fight with this, or reap with this, you may ready and fight with a neighboring creature. With a neighbor. With a neighbor. So you put it in somewhere, and it happens on play, it happens on fight, and it happens on reap. That's pretty cool. I, I like think that. all these cards are awesome. Yeah. And again, this is a card that comes into play and does something, if you have a board. Exactly. And I feel like your opponent's going to have to deal with it. Because mm-hmm. otherwise, you're just going to reap. You know what? I'm going to take this poison um, skirmish creature that I've got beside him and just keep picking off your creatures. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I wish it was ready and use a neighboring creature, but, I mean, ready and fight a neighboring creature is also fantastic. It is, yeah. And it also says you may, so you do not have to do that. Whereas, like, some of the other cards in the past set, the set that we're in now, mm-hmm. actually say you have to do that. Like, it's like, play and ready a neighboring creature. This is you may... So, which I love even more because now you've got options in there. So one question. Yeah. If there's no opponents and you use that guy's ability, can that creature just reap? If it's of the house sanctum. If it is, okay. Because what it would end up doing is it would end up, like, you'd end up deploying it in. It, you would say this is a sanctum card. This okay. sanctum card is uh, uh, exhausted. Okay. You play him in. It would ready itself, and then there's nobody to fight, so the fight would fail. So, but it sits there ready. So then you can go reap again. Oh, I see. Yeah, it works really... That's also a very cool mechanic with this thing. Um, is there any more Sanctum cards? Yeah, let's do this one more, and then we'll we'll kind of start wrapping it up. Smite is our first 
action that we've talked about on here for the new ones. Mm -hmm. This is actually kind of neat. Um, so first off, you play it ready and fight with a friendly creature. That's cool. <clears throat> so that's any house. I love cards that do that. Love, love, love. But you also deal two damage to the attacked creature's neighbors. Wow, that's pretty cool. Think about that. Like, you could send that in, and like you could wipe out some elusive creatures that have been annoying. Exactly, you. yeah. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> I wish I had a raw amber on it. That would just, like, I put the icing <laughs> on my cake here. But I do think this card is actually really, really, really good. Um, anything that lets you cheat houses attacking, I think, good. Are you thumbs up for that card? I am, yeah. So we're thumbs up for every one of these Synchro cards, right? Yeah, and those are the new ones that we just saw. Yeah, and there are a lot more. Like, we're, we're just kind of... There are so many new cards that are out there now. Um, you guys should definitely check out Keyforge Compendium. Mm -hmm. They've got a lot of them listed up there and kind of get a feeling for it. But honestly, what I'm, I feel like Sanctum isn't incredible. It's strong, but I feel like these new cards actually are going to make it where I, when I open a Sanctum deck where I'm like, oh, I hope I have All Bade the Grim. <laughs> I hope I have the Armor Smith. I hope, you know what I yeah. mean? I hope I have these cards. Because I want to play with them. Like, I really want to play with these cards. I'm super excited about that. Mm. So, maybe um, we'll move on to our next topic now. You good with that? Yeah. And we'll probably have already played with this by the time we get done editing and this, this video and podcast out. But tomorrow night, we're going to be doing a sealed tournament. And I want to win. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I want to win more. You want to win. I want to win. Andrew, who's coming with us, I'm sure he wants to win. Yeah. I really don't want a deck as bad as I got in my last sealed tournament. It was so brutal. It was, yes. It was horrible. It was a very low SAS rating deck, very low creature count, and no shadow, steel, or controlling effect. It was insanely brutal. Where both of your decks, I felt, were, like, strong Yeah, in that last one. I want to open a good deck, and I want to do well in this tournament because i feel like gameplay wise i feel like i've got the game down really solid now yeah i've seen most of the rare cards every once in a while one will pop up with like whoa i didn't know that was there but i am i feel like i'm at a point now i've been playing a lot on crucible i've been playing like at work you and i need to get some more games and reps in we do yes but i feel like i'm ready to do this by the way is your friend going to come this weekend? No. No? Dang no. it. I asked other people, too. He's been actually, trying to recruit people at school yeah. to get it. I've been trying to recruit people at work. There's actually some people that actually play Keyforge at oh, my school. Oh, nice. But they just can't come. Oh. So, uh, yeah. The, um, the next, so tomorrow is the SEAL tournament. And then we have two Chainbound events this month. Hmm. We're going to try to go to all of those, um, which I am super hyped about. Like, super, super hyped about the Chain Battle event. And I got to figure out what deck I'm playing. I don't think I'm going to play the deck I played last time. I don't think it was good. That deck is amazing, but Mars in that deck is so weak. weak. And I have that stupid Phosphorus whatever card that gives me two chains for stunning all <laughs> non-Mars creatures. Yeah. I hate that card. It always ends up in my hand, and I'm like, oh, I got this is like a wasted card. So that deck is going to be sideline, unfortunately, even though it's got a good sass rating. What Even though do you want to play then? That's what I'm figuring out. Okay. Um, I, I have that, that deck I was telling you about that, where I got that 18 creature yeah. line. Has like enough controlling things. It has a really heavy creature base. Has some like really fun things in there that I'm enjoying playing. I might go with something like that. What house is it? Um, so it's Brobnar, oh. Shadows, and Sanctum. Oh, okay. So I'm telling you this cool combo. Uh, and you've actually done this to me before, but in this this deck, Fire Spitter did one damage. My opponent had a big creature board. Yeah. Next turn, Cleansing Wave, I gained, like, <laughs> I'm trying to remember the number, but I ended up with, like, 12 Amber at the end of that turn. That's pretty and awesome. it's like, that is so much fun. It's like, I, I burned all their creatures, and then I'm going to heal it all, and I gain an Amber for each damage that I do to them. Mm -hmm. It's just an awesome combo. It also has cards in there, like Snack Lifter, which allows me to, like, just steal one of their artifacts, which is one of my favorite cards. Uh, leaning towards that, and it's an 84 SAS rating, so it's pretty, it's not, it's not bad. Yeah. All right. I think that wraps it up for today. 
Do you have anything else? Any closing comments? No, that's it. Wish us luck at the tournament. One of us three, so Adam or I or Andrew, I hope one of us wins. We at least need to like top four this time. Yeah. We're always so darn close. We are. All right. Till next time, everyone. Keep have gaming. Have a good week. Keep gaming.